they are discovering that there is a power in Islam that enables Islam to resist these superpowers. They, they shared it in the evening. The next morning, the police were in the masjid door. Success after struggle yeah, has a different taste. Maybe your platform is the first platform uh, openly, yeah, uh, the, the first public platform I mentioned this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to the Umfeed podcast. It's your host Shabir Hassan. Today, alhamdulillah, we were joined by Sheikh Dr. Haytham al-Haddad. Um, it was uh, an insightful discussion related to Palestine. Um, you know, we, we, we discussed with the Sheikh why we as Muslims should be optimistic, um, a kind of roundup of what's been happening and a roadmap for what we can do further um, uh, in, in light of recent events. So I hope, inshallah, you benefit uh, from this episode and enjoy. Sheikh Haytham, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a pleasure to have you on, on the Umfi podcast. Khair, the pleasure is mine. Alhamdulillah. Honor is mine. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for, for being with us. And uh, of course, um, I guess the, the dominant topic for this, this episode, um, as we discussed last time as well, is, is still Palestine. And, uh, you know, as we speak today, it's coming up to almost two months since the, you know, October 7th and the, and the events that took place. Um, so more than 50 days now. So it's been a while. Um, so what, what, what tends to happen usually at, around this point is, uh, uh, you know, the community, we kind of start losing momentum. You know, we kind of stop speaking about it. We yeah. kind of move on to the next issue. So um, I wanted to still kind of highlight some important points about the current issue, looking forward, moving ahead as a community, Good. Good. Um, and so on, inshallah. Um, but just just before we we go into that, um, I also did want to highlight some of the, subhanAllah, you know, even though even though it's it's you know what we've been seeing is is you know the, the numbers I think you know more than fifteen thousand now in terms yeah. of numbers, uh, you know, those who have been killed. Um, that includes, I think, almost half is children, more than children, half, and, right? Yeah. More than half, exactly. Yeah. They said that it might the toll, the death toll might reach to twenty plus. Twenty, yeah, yeah. twenty thousand, exactly. Um, so, hearing all of that, subhanAllah, you know, you're, you're thinking there's, there's, it's it's just very bleak, you know. Yeah. There's nowhere to kind of look where there's a positive, but I, I think there are some kind of positives we can extract from yeah. from what we've been seeing, and I actually want to just start. Even on Ilmfeed, we've been sharing videos of some the reactions of the Palestinians on the ground there yeah. in Gaza, for example. And many have been inspired, you know. Yeah. Um, and this is why I think some of those videos have gone viral. Yeah. Um, purely because seeing the reaction, thinking, SubhanAllah, if I was in this situation, I've just lost my brother, just lost my child. And then the way that they're thanking Allah, Alhamdulillah, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, this reaction is just, is just amazing. So yeah. I just want to start on, on this note, actually, which is, what are some of the, the lessons that we can take from the Palestinians um, themselves? Okay. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Thank you. Jazakallah khair for allowing me to share a few uh, ideas. Actually, when we speak about the lessons that we can take from the whole atrocity, um, there are Imani lessons, yeah. Iman-based lessons. There are... Uh, political lessons, there are intellectual lessons, uh, there are some e deep lessons to be taken. Sure. And let us go back to the Imani lessons. And the first lesson that I always mention is that we need to remember that whatever Allah Jalla wa ala decrees is khair. Mm. Anything that takes place in this dunya is khair. As the Prophet ﷺ said, evil doesn't belong to you, O Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ says that the people to be tested the most are the prophets. And then the people who are close to the prophets and close to them. So, uh, and the Prophet ﷺ said, if Allah ﷺ likes someone, Allah ﷺ will test him more. We can go on and on talking about the uh, the benefits of bala in the akhirah, mm. the benefits of tests in the akhirah. Uh, but let me stop because I'm sure everyone knows about those verses. So, but the point I would like to stress on that 
the bala, the test is not good for Muslims in the akhirah, but it is good for them in the dunya as well. Okay. The issue is we might not see the big, the bigger picture. And Allah Jalla ala, as he says, Wallahu ya'alamu wa antum la ta'alamu. Allah Jalla ala says, wa asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum. You might dislike something, but it is what? Better for you. Mm. Okay? You might like something, but it is not better for you. So, and Allah Jalla ala does not create a pure evil. Allah Jalla ala doesn't create pure evil. Leave this point. But the other point is for Muslims, anything that happens, yes, brothers and sisters, please listen to this. Anything that happens to Muslims is khair, mm. is goodness. In this life and in the hereafter. Okay. Now in the hereafter, it is clear in terms of the reward. Yeah. But in this life, how? How? There are number, many, an array of reasons. I will just highlight a few of them. Okay. The first one is, see, Allah Jalla wa Ala wants this ummah to be in the front. This ummah is not any nation. We should not see ourselves as any nation. This is wrong. Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, "Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna 'anil munkar." Allah Jalla wa Ala wants us to be the best of nations. The best and the leading nation. Allah Jalla Ala sent to us Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is the leader of all prophets. All prophets prayed behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And all prophets were commanded, okay, لَإِنْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ لَتُؤْمِنُ النَّبِهِ If a prophet comes after you, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have to believe in him. Isa Alaihi Wasallam will come down, yeah, Isa. The Prophet Isa will come down at the end of the time. He is a prophet, but he will not come down as a prophet because he will follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will follow the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this ummah that is led by the best of humanity, the one that Allah jalla wa ala, uh, chose him to be the leader of humanity, this ummah has to be the leader of all nations. And when this ummah retreats and it is not in the front, Allah Jalla wa Ala causes something to happen, a calamity to happen for this ummah to wake up, to rebuild itself, to become in the front again. And this meaning is missing in, in the whole discourse that Allah Jalla wa Ala wants to push us, to force us to be in the front. Yeah. You know, in the past, in some, you know, some, some, uh, some cultures, if you're a child and you know that he is capable of being uh, one of the best, yeah, and but he is lazy, so you will push him, you will push him, sometimes you force him to do certain things because you know that he is capable. You don't accept any position from him except what? To be in the front. And this is the first benefit out of this. Okay. Okay, the second main benefit is Allah Jalla wa Ala, and this is we see it, Allah Jalla wa Ala wants to expose people, yeah, or expose the hypocrisy of those who claim that they have the, the highest standards of morality, <laughs> the, the values. Allah Jalla wa Ala wants to expose them. Not only to expose them, but to what? So we as Muslims, uh, we get rid of this intellectual indoctrination or intellectual occupation that we were suffering from. Mm. Yeah. So Allah Jalla wa Ala wants to filter us, to purify us. Yeah. And this has happened. Okay. We can talk more about it, but these are among the main two benefits in the dunya. Now, I would like to uh, say that Brothers and sisters, don't expect to live in this life without being tested. Mm. Many people say, oh, when can we live in peace? Mm. You don't know? When can we uh, just, we don't want to see children being killed. Yeah? 
And this is, by the way, many uh, Muslim leaders, unfortunately, they are blaming Palestinians and they want to uh, normalize with the Israelis. They say that because we want to live in peace. We want prosperity. We want... Uh, we don't want to see killing anymore. It's uh, impossible. This life is not created for this kind of peace. Yeah. You want this kind of peace, work for the Akhirah, and there in the Akhirah, you will find that kind of peace. So this is normal. And Allah Jalla Ala mentioned it in the Quran. كل نفس ذائقة الموت أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يأتيكم مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم مستهم البأس والضراء وزلزلوا حتى يقول الرسول والذين آمنوا معه and let us look at the life of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has he lived just one year without any challenges or without any problems no. either internal or external yeah. Okay, so so coming back now, so so that 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 is all clear, and I'm glad you you clarified that, Sheikh, because that's probably on a lot of a lot of people's minds, which is, yeah, you know, we do want peace, we do just want uh, one normal year, yeah, you know, where where we're not seeing if it's not Palestine, then it's Syria, if it's not Syria, then it's some, somewhere, yeah. Um, so so I'm glad we've clarified that, but now coming back to the Palestinians themselves mm -hmm. and the resilience and the steadfastness and the patience that we've seen from them, these are some of the things. But what other Kind of lessons can we can okay. we take from them? Yeah, we we can go to that. But mm. see, I want I don't want when we speak about Palestinians, mm. I don't want Muslims to understand that this is a conflict between Palestinians and the occupation. Right. This is far bigger than that, and I used to say that it is a form of it is a manifestation of a clash of civilizations. Mm. Yeah. It is a manifestation of that. Now, clash, the clash between civilizations can be manifested in different ways. This is one of them. Yeah. Okay. And maybe the United States realized that, oh no, if we continue doing that, Muslims and the whole Muslim world might see this as an attack against Islam. So, Maybe they started to retreat a little bit because they have seen that the whole Muslim world is seeing it as like this. Yeah. Yeah. So whether they have really retreated or not, but initially it was like this. Why America and Britain and France and many, even Holland, you know, Holland sold some uh, military equipment recently to Israel uh, and Germany, of course, and many other countries. Why, why, why they are doing this? Because they see it that it is, uh, it is a critical conflict. It is a critical war, and if Israel were to lose or the occupation were to lose this battle or this war then all of us, we are going to lose. Right. Yeah? And there will be so many consequences behind that. So they put it like this. It is not us who put it like this. It is true that they are trying to say, no, look, yeah, uh, we have some Palestinians who, uh, or Arabs, who have the Israeli nationality. We are not against all Muslims. We are just against the radicals. We are against the extremists. We are against the terrorists. But Muslims are mature enough to understand that, no, this is not against them. Maybe the Palestinians, they are in the front. Yeah? yeah. But it is against any anyone who doesn't want to be colonized. And that's why, you know, now there are so many non-Muslims yeah. are understanding this reality and they are joining yeah. the, let us say, the camp that is anti-imperialism, anti-colonization, anti-control. Yeah. So that is the real clash between a colonizing power or powers, yeah, uh, that want to uh, dominate that want to control other nations and not only that if other nations were to resist 
they will label them as extremists and because they don't want anyone, any power to challenge them. Yeah. So that's why so many non-Muslims now are understanding that, oh no, wait a minute. It is not about Palestinians and Gaza. It is about any people who want to have self-autonomy mm. and they want to have independent. And they discovered that, oh, their governments have been lying about so many things. Yeah. Uh, why? Because they have an agenda which is to uh, imperialism agenda, to control, to dominate, and they don't want anyone to resist that agenda. If you resist that agenda, you will be labeled as an extremist. Yeah. This is how we should see it. I know yeah, this is not, no, is not your question. Of course. But, of course. Uh, but spe speaking on, on positives, like we were, we were talking about some of the positives that come out of here, and I think this is one of the positives, which is A, on from the Muslim from Muslim perspective, you know, even though, of course, many in you know, every year, every Ramadan, we hear of something and, and you know, there's there's a bit of a wake up. But I feel like this time around, a lot of people are saying it feels different. Yes. You know, the, the Muslim community as a whole, whether whichever background you, you claim, everyone's woken up. Yes. And, and the, the numbers and, and the response is unprecedented. And as you mentioned, additionally, you have non-Muslims and those who aren't Muslim, they've also, on, for example, you look at social media, the narrative, it's changed, it's in yeah. our favor now. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would highlight that as another positive. Definitely. This time around, it's, it's it a is. huge wake up. Yeah, it is. Some people say, yeah, you know, uh, there are so many non-Muslims who became Muslims. This is very good, excellent. But that is a small part yeah. of the uh, positive outcome. You know, the bigger part is what? The shock, mm. yeah? People started to understand the reality of the world. And not only that, they also started, you know, now there is a polarization. The people, the masses who want to be independent and the governments or maybe Western governments, not all of them because Belgium and Spain have like, you know, fair stances to a good degree. Uh, and also uh, Latin America, many countries from Latin America, yeah, yeah. except Argentine. So uh, they, the, this polarization is being crystallized more. Mm -hmm. There is a camp, imperialist uh, countries led by the United States, and there is another camp that resists that. Mm -hmm. And they have seen that the other camp who is resisting imperialism is who is Islam. Mm -hmm. And they are discovering that there is a power in Islam that enables Islam to resist these superpowers. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why now they are impressed with Islam and Muslims. They are really impressed. So for me, that is one of the best outcomes of the whole conflict because they see that Islam, first of all, is a powerful way of life, has the power and the courage and, and uh, you know, the audacity to resist colonialism, imperialism, domination, injustice, injustice. Islam is able to resist that and not only that, they see that Islam is the only one who is doing that because Russia is trying to do that, but Russia, they have their own agenda. Okay, China has its own agenda. So who is left? It is Islam. And this reminds me, you know, why I'm, I'm talking about the clash of civilizations. When, um, uh, when uh, you know, these two German authors who uh, spoke about, even Samuel Huntington, when he spoke about clash of civilizations, he said the only power and the only culture and the only way of life, the only religion, if you, okay, I don't remember his exact word, that is able to resist uh, globalization, uh, Western globalization is Islam. Mm. It is the only culture. And I think he mentioned China, but he mentioned that China has certain problems that um, might not qualify it to be the main power that resists that Western globalization.
Interesting. Yeah. So, so, so for me, that is a huge outcome. That is a victory for uh, us as Islam and Muslims. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, I want to ask you about something which you mentioned in in a recent talk you gave, I believe maybe a week or so ago. Uh, this is this is the quote. Um, you said something along the lines of, Wallahi, I am very optimistic because Allah is preparing this ummah to be the next leaders. We've kind of touched on it, but what can, do you mind elaborating on yeah. this statement? So, see, Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas, ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. You were the best nation ever raised to mankind in joining the good and forbid the evil. When, see, if you look, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam was sent 100, uh, 1,400 years ago or more than 1,400 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, he lived for 10 years almost in Medina. Then we had the Khulafa al-Rashidin for almost 30 years. And then we have the Abbasi, uh, the Umayyan period. Uh, the, Abba, the Umayyan period lasted for um, 80 plus years. And then we had the Abbasi period. Abbasi period, Abbasi Caliphate was destroyed 656 Hijri. Which means that for 650 years, Islam was either the main superpower in the world or one of the main superpowers. Okay. After the demolish of the caliphate, which was the symbol of Islam, of the strength and power of Islam, uh, Islam still existed. Islam will never die. So, and Islam, in of its nature, Allah Jalla wa Ala wants it, it to be like this. It rebuilds Muslims. Mm-hmm. Islam rebuilds. Islam reforms Muslims. Muslims do not reform Islam. Islam reforms them. So Islam reformed Muslims. Islam rebuilt them again. So they started to build themselves. They managed to defeat the uh, Mongols, the Tatars. And then uh, they managed to start an era of a new Muslim superpower, which is the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire also lasted for more than 600 years. So if you calculate 650 years in the beginning and 600 years, this is 1,250 years out of the history of Islam. Islam has been there for 1,400 years. This is more than 85% of our existence, we were either the main superpower or one of the main superpowers. Yeah. This is this is our nature as Muslims. This is why, this is how Allah Jalla wa Ala created us. Allah Jalla wa Ala doesn't accept from this ummah that follows the best of leaders, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to be in the back. So that's why Allah Jalla wa Ala is preparing us is preparing us. And you know, when you get anything that is valuable in a very cheap way, you will not appreciate it. Yes or no? Very true. Success after struggle, yeah, has a different taste. Yes? Success after struggle has what? A very sweet taste. And you will value it even more. If you get any success, easily, you will not value it, you will lose it. And that's why Allah Jalla is preparing this ummah. And I see it. And that's why I am very, very optimistic. And I say to the brothers, you don't need to be pessimistic whatsoever. And as we have said, we have seen, the if someone were to say to me, maybe this is an emotional Rhetoric, yeah, but uh, from an objective perspective, we have seen now that the West, who was dominant in terms of uh, intellectual domination and values, now, first of all, they lost their identity. Mm. Agree or not? Yeah, absolutely. People are talking, where are the human rights? Where are they? No, no one is talking about the human rights. Where is uh, democracy? Where, where are those values that you are talking to us day and night about those values? 
So they lost an identity. That's why they, they have a gap. And that's why the, those who are free thinkers, they are moving towards Islam. Why? Because they see that Islam fills this gap perfectly. Yeah? And in a way that is, that is in line and in tandem with their, uh, with their, with their fitra, natural disposition. So this is one thing. So the intellectual victory, the moral victory, the moral victory. People have seen the Palestinian resistance and how they treat the prisoners. They have seen also the Palestinians that, uh, imagine, imagine it is difficult to see all members of your family killed one time, my cousin, my own cousin. Yeah, he's a doctor. He's a top surgeon. Uh, him and his wife and all of his children and many of his grandchildren were killed on the spot by an airstrike. Fifth, 14 members. Some families, they were, you know, deleted completely from records. Uh, a friend of mine, a friend of mine, he lost uh, until the moment... 60 plus from his own cousins, let alone his in-laws. Uh, from my own, we could not count the number of people whom we lost from our own family. This is in terms of losses. Imagine the damage, the amount of damage. It is uh, the, the, the bombs that were uh, that, that sent on Gaza, they are equal to more than two nuclear bombs. So when, when, when people see this, and yet they see Palestinians saying, Alhamdulillah, mm. and they are able to, to stand up and to continue. Yeah? And also there are reports that uh, still there are ladies who give birth and they, have, they are pregnant and they are carrying on. And sometimes they bring pictures of people, uh, young children playing, uh, uh, within, within, you know, the the, the rubble. Yeah, I saw a clip the other day of the Imam giving khutbah. Literally, the masjid was just basically rubble, and he was giving khutbah, and there's a there's a congregation. Yes, there. around him. Okay, and someone told me that there was. I I could not verify that he he got his uh, nikah done. Yeah, <laughs> I said, oh, please, you need to verify this because really this is quite funny. Yeah, so people are moving on. What made them strong like this? What made them strong like this? The whole world is asking. Mm -hmm. So this is what? Moral victory. So we have intellectual victory, moral victory. Most importantly, what? Spiritual iman victory. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And this is evident. No one can argue about this. These are the main three foundations for any uh, any any growing civilization, it you know the biggest mistake, one big mistake of the Western civilization, if we were to say, and the let us say Israel, although I like to say to to use the word Israel, the occupation, is that they thought that uh, physical strength and power is enough is yeah. enough to build a civilization. You don't need morality. You don't need spirituality. Even intellectualism is not that important. The most important thing is what? Technology, mm -hmm. weapons, uh, money, economy. They thought that. But the minute they start a decline morally, spiritually, even intellectually, the minute the other power, the other types of power, whether military, physically, economy, it will collapse. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I feel that this is the start of the decline of the West. Yeah? The West that is anti-Islam. Yeah. Maybe there is a West that is not anti-Islam. Okay, but the West that is anti-Islam, this is the decline, the start of the decline of that.
That, so that's why we are positive. Yeah. Yes. Because it's not because the West is declining, because the truth is growing. Mm. And the truth is going to prevail. Yeah. And the West, any nation, even Muslims, when they become unjust, even Palestinians, when they become unjust, and when they lose morality, spirituality, and intellectualism, will fall down. And we will happy for them to fall down. But Allah Jalla wa ala will bring them back to spirituality, morality, and intellectualism, so they will grow up again. And the West maybe is in need of that shock to go back to their sense so they can save whatever civilization they have built. Mm, absolutely. Um, so we, we mentioned at the beginning, Sheikh, about how as time goes on, it's natural sometimes for us to become desensitized. So we're talking now about the, the positives, we're talking about the optimism, we're talking about you know how we can push forward. But at the same time, naturally what may start to happen is the, the protest numbers start coming down, the, the sharing, the talking, the activity comes down. How can we as Muslims perhaps avoid that? Is it, is it inevitable that we're just going to kind of things will dwindle? What can we do to just keep pushing forward? Okay, see, I don't like uh, which, uh, what we call it in Arabic, uh, blaming yourself all the time mm -hmm. and feeling uh, pessimistic and, and, and uh, feeling that you are losing. This is a natural thing. What you mentioned is something very natural. Uh, when the hit is there, people will just yeah. stand up and they will emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, try to stand up. Uh, but what makes the person continue is his belief. So that's why now maybe it is Allah Jalla Ala decrees that he is moving things into the right perspective, which is belief. So uh, the emotions will decline and the belief will take place, okay? Yeah. So now what motivates us to continue is our belief system. What is our belief? That we have to support our brothers and sisters, wherever they are. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called us as one body and as one building. If part of it fell in pain, the whole body has to reflect on that. Allah Jalla Ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً Okay, uh, part of that is the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to help our brothers and sisters. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he said the best of deeds is to make your Muslim brother happy. And he said, Unsur أَخَاكَ Help your brother whether he is oppressed or uh, oppressor. This is one thing. But also... The belief system that we have, uh, we have to be a leading nation, this will keep us also motivated because we are not just reactionary. No, we have a goal. And what is the goal? To lead humanity. So humanity will live in prosperity and justice. And we have seen that if Islam is not a superpower, yeah, if Islam is not a superpower, there will be what? injustice prevailing all over the world we have seen this previously in many countries we have seen this between india and kashmir we have seen this uh, between uh, china and the uyghurs we have seen this in central africa we have seen this even among non-muslims between russia and ukraine and we will keep seeing this why because the 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 state that should be a superpower that is not driven by physical, materialistic, financial interest. It will be driven by what? By the faith, the Islamic faith. And part of that faith is to establish justice. Allah Azza wa Jal called us the Ummah of Justice. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kunu qawwamina bil qist. O you who believe, establish justice. So, uh, this ummah, if it is not the leading nation, then injustice will prevail. Why? Because each superpower will be what? 
will be fighting for its own interest. And they don't mind in dominating other nations for their own what interest. They don't mind in killing. As we see in Gaza, yeah. they don't mind in massacring people, butchering children, destroying a whole nation because of their own interest. Maybe in Gaza, now, you know, maybe th there are people talking about uh, gas, the, the, the gas that is, they, they discovered in, uh, in the uh, Mediterranean, yeah, in the eastern side of the Mediterranean. And they said Gaza has, uh, should have a big portion of that gas. Maybe that is true or not. But the key thing is Gaza is a symbol of resisting, as we said in the beginning, what a colonization project. So that's why uh, if there is a power that does not believe in the divine, it will suppress others, it will colonize others, it will occupy, it will commit injustice, and they don't care. And now we understand that what Islam has to be one of those superpowers. And this, in of itself, will keep us as Muslims moving. Yeah. yeah? So we'll not be just uh, motivated by emotional scenes that we will uh, see on social media, etc. Yeah. yeah. But like, you know, like we said earlier, I think um, even, though, even though what we're saying is it is natural for us to, you know, to, to lose con some kind of momentum. Yeah. Or to, you know, yeah. But, but, I, but I still will, will, will uh, reiterate the point that this time, it does feel different. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's very different. I agree. You know, I agree. It's, it's not something that I feel like is going to just go away so soon. Yeah. And even if we kind of move on and there's other events that take place, I think that we've left a mark, you know, yeah. and there, there'll be a mark Definitely. that's left 100%. Definitely. And the whole thing has left, even we might not uh, see it, but mm. it has left a mark uh, on the entire humanity. Yeah. The entire humanity. And uh, in a continuation of what you've been saying, I think it is the job of the imams and leaders. Yeah, I was going to come to this. Yeah. yeah, because the imams and leaders, they are not like the masses. Mm. They have to lead the ummah. Mm. They have to keep pushing the ummah. They have to motivate the ummah. Yeah. Okay. So this is, yani, this is something that uh, will help us to keep the momentum. Yeah. So yeah. before we come to the, the the point about imams and du'at and you know scholars yeah. etc., um, I don't want to talk about the. You know, I think we're way past the discussion on protesting and all of those things. Should we yeah. do it or not? I, I'm not going to go to that. Yeah, please don't <laughs> go to that. Yeah, but, I'm not interested. But but, in but, but there has been, for example, um, you know, some people who say, okay, you know, we're seeing, like for example, I was at the million the million march, you know, a few weeks yeah. ago. Umfid, we did we did some coverage of it, and it was amazing, mashallah, to see. The, the you know how how so many people came together and mobilized, um, but you know there's still some sections and maybe again it's just the the what would you call it the, the kind of vocal minority yeah which is you know um, if you see on social social media you know the the masjids are empty um, whereas yeah. when it comes to the protests and the yeah. rallies yeah. you know you have yeah. hundreds of thousands million millions of people yeah um, how do we respond to this because at the same time you know we're not we're not of course underestimating salah and Dua yeah. and you know the yeah. masjid and things yeah. is very important for yeah. us. Yeah. Then you have the protests, yeah. and then you have some who who are kind of like you have to, it's either one or the other. Yeah, you know. Yeah. What would exactly. Our be? See, to be honest with you, yani, um, I don't like to speak about those people because mm. I I feel that they are just creating noise. Mm. They don't want to do anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't want to do anything, and they don't want others to do exactly. anything. Yeah, yeah. So let us, you know, bypass them. Okay, yeah. but. Uh, I want to highlight something else, which is, see, we have to understand and, and uh, what we see now really stresses on this point that the ummah is in need of the entire ummah. The ummah cannot get victory by a particular group or through a particular group or through a particular domination or uh, a certain school of thought. Yeah. No. The ummah is in need of what? The ummah. Of the ummah. This is the summary. Mm. I hope all Muslims understand this. Yeah. So, 
the entire ummah is in a bad situation. Who can revive the entire ummah? The entire ummah. Yes, maybe there might be some people who will lead. Definitely, this is natural. But those who will lead, if they are alone, the ummah will not wake up. The ummah cannot be reformed. Yeah. So the ummah is in need of what? Of the entire ummah. Yeah. In terms of what? First, first of all, in terms of um, schools of thoughts, in terms of groups, in terms of groups, Salafis, Ikhwanis, Tabliq, let us be honest. Uh, who else? Uh, Sufis. Okay, although Sufi is not a group because there are yeah. Khwani Sufis, Salafi Sufis, yeah, etc. Yeah. But anyway, let us just say, all of us are in need of all of us. Mm-hmm. The Ummah cannot be reformed by the Ikhwanis, by the Salafis. This is not true. And we have seen that. And I was saying to some brothers, imagine, brothers, you believe that your group is on the Haqq. Mm. Yeah? And other groups are misguided because you believe that the Prophet Sallallahu said, my ummah will divide into 70 plus ummah. And there is something called the Ta'if al-Mansura, the victorious group. Yeah? Will you be able to handle this global conflict by yourselves? This is madness. Mm-hmm. And we have seen, subhanAllah, not only that, not in terms of uh, religious affiliation or domination, no. Uh, also, we have seen, even in terms of practicing the deen, mm-hmm. we have seen in the protests so many people who are not practicing. Yes or no? Yeah, correct. Not only that, okay, forget about the demonstrations. In many countries, in in France, in uh, Turkey, in number of other countries, there are uh, lawyers. There are groups of lawyers who are taking the occupation to the uh, war. Uh, what is it? Uh, um, war crimes uh, court. Yeah, yeah, the court of war crimes. Mm. They are not bearded people. They are not. Salafi people, they are not Sufi people, they are not uh, people. Maybe, maybe some of them they might pray, they might not pray. Yeah, is that true or not? Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. Okay. Let me just go beyond that, which something might lead some of our brothers to go crazy. Musics and 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 singing. Mm. Yeah. Of course, I don't listen to music, okay? I believe, generally speaking, that music is not in line with Islam, Mm -hmm. okay? Generally speaking, there might be some exceptions. Let us not talk about that. I don't want because uh, some of our brothers, they have tunneled way of thinking. Mm. They always like to think in a microwave. Yeah. Yeah? So they will just pick on this matter and discuss it. Mm. Question, has music contributed in managing this uh, crisis in favor of the Palestinians? Potentially, from some perspectives, yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. The reality is yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whether the Palestinian songs Mm. that have some music with them, Mm. yeah, whether even uh, other songs, Mm. you know, that that song, uh, uh, the Swedish song, there is a Swedish song, uh, La Viva, La Viva, La Viva. I don't know what does that mean. La Viva, La Viva, La Viva, okay. Palestina, Palestina, Palestina. Yeah. yeah, it is a song written by, uh, I think he's a Christian, uh, Palestinian who migrated to Sweden uh, maybe 50 years ago. Okay. And he wrote that song. Mm. Yeah, and it went viral, but then it died. And mm. now it went viral again. Okay. They said in Stockholm they stopped demonstrations, but some people came with this song, <laughs> yeah, and then people started to sing that song, mm. and they remembered Palestine, and then the authorities they could not stop them, right? Yeah, mm. 
this is an example. Mm -hmm. So I am not saying, I'm not saying because I have to make this <laughs> course, disclaimer because yeah, yeah. our brothers cannot handle this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not saying that music is haram listening. Uh, I'm not saying, sorry, that music is halal listening to it is halal. Yeah, yeah. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Jalla Ala might give victory. Mm. Yeah? Through what? Through a fajr person. Yeah. We have disbelievers mm. who are participating in this uh, global mm. anti-colonialism campaign. Just an example, sorry, Sheikh, that's come to my mind is um, there's a huge, you know, um, Hollywood film franchise. Mm. So recently, I don't know if you've heard the, the you know, the, the, there's, I think they're on like film number six or seven now, but the main, I think, actress, she was in support of Palestine. Ah, she yes, got, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, she got yeah, axed from, yes. the, from, from the film. Yeah, I and heard And then I think it, her yeah. co-actress yeah. also yeah. Yeah. was in support. So she's left now. Yeah, yeah. And now they've, they've decided to just reboot the whole film, like completely yeah. ax everyone now. See? So it has, you know, yeah, these are non-Muslims who are Hollywood yeah, stars, you yeah. know. And that's why I say now we as Muslims, mm. okay, we have to be clever enough. And this is a big challenge for us. Mm. And this is what something I, I, I think about. And maybe your platform is the first platform uh, openly, mm. yeah, uh, the, the first public platform I mentioned this. Mm. I mentioned it some uh, to some brothers. I said... We need to be clever enough and not only clever enough, accommodating, wise, strategic enough, including the imams and the scholars, because they should be the leaders mm. to uh, be able to have a discourse that will appeal to millions of people, mm -hmm. at least to transform them from pure kufr, yeah, to the, 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 the first gate of Islam, mm. the, 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 to the gate of Islam, to the first step, yeah. okay, in the gate of Islam. So we need that discourse. Mm. And it is a very uh, difficult job because Islam, see, one big problem with many young people, you know, I had, uh, I had this uh, clip uh, maybe I'm sure you have seen it with uh, with uh, Sheikh Asrar Rashid and Brother Muhammad uh, Hijab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that they said, "Oh, you are Sufi," and I said, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah you yeah, said yeah. you gave yeah, bay'ah. Yeah. I said, "Yeah, I've been Sufi since." Okay. Yeah, yeah. And many brothers they could not handle this, <laughs> and they are yeah. asking me, yeah? Yeah, "Yeah, have you really become Sufi?" Because their minds are so tunneled so tunneled to discuss minor things. Mm. They don't look at Islam, yeah, as a way that came to reform the entire humanity, to build a civilization based on the guidance of Allah Jalla Ala, mm. is a divine based civilization. Yeah. They don't look at Islam like this and they can't see Islam like this. Mm. That's why if we do not understand this, yeah, we will be bogged or what is the word stuck mm. at micro elements mm. of Islam. I'm not saying, by the way, they are not important. They are important, but they have what? Their place. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, especially when we're... When we are this, yeah, now yeah. in front of, mm. you know, the whole world mm. is in front of... Uh, uh, the whole world has been shocked. Yeah. And there is a huge value, vacuum in the world, intellectual vacuum, mm. spiritual vacuum, moral vacuum. Who is able to fill that vacuum? If we don't step in as Muslims, mm. yeah, we will not be able, we will miss a golden chance, a golden opportunity. I hope that this platform, this, this discussion to, to, be understood by Muslims before they just pick on micro issues. Mm. If we don't, uh, if we don't produce a discourse mm. that is capable of handling this global challenge, this global vacuum, yeah. we will be missing a very big opportunity to bring Islam into the leadership of the entire humanity. Mm. And we will be questioned about that. 
on the day of resurrection. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So so we cannot uh, put Islam forward as a way that will rebuild the entire humanity yeah. based on the divine values if we are just thinking about these micro issues. Mm. Oh, you became Sufi. Yeah, you gave bay'ah, you uh, say dhikr loudly, or you are Ash'ari, you are Salafi, you are Ikhwani, mm. you are Hizb al-Tahrir, or you, you know, l- l- let me use this, you trim your beard, so, yani, okay, or you, sister, you don't wear hijab, mm. yeah? I need to advise the sister mm-hmm. to wear hijab, yeah? But I should not make this as what, as a breaking uh, deal. Mm. Either you wear hijab or you are not mm-hmm. part of, no sister, you are part of me, I am part of you. Yeah. We are all together. And then I can tell her in the right way, in the right format, sister, okay, you need to get closer to Allah, Jalla ala, you need to wear your hijab. This ability, I'm just simplifying, yeah, yeah, simplifying yeah, it. This ability not to, lose the orthodox islam mm. but to uh, to 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 make it palatable for these global challenges that we are facing i think this is the biggest challenge intellectuals mm. muslim intellectuals and imams and the scholars are facing and this is the real challenge now for us mm. i believe that uh, you know the palestinians in bi'idhnillah yeah bi'idhnillah they will win actually they, 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 they already won. They already won. Yeah. So let us, let us prepare for the real big challenge after that, which is what the challenge of the whole ummah to produce a discourse for the entire humanity that suits the entire humanity and that brings them slowly, slowly to Islam despite that the, there will be superpowers who will resist that and who will fight that and they will try to suppress Islam yeah. from producing that kind of uh, intellectual, global, uh, spiritual discourse that enables or empowers mm. the entire humanity to build a civilization or to build, let us cut it short, to build a divine-based civilization. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm glad you, you mentioned these points, and, and I really hope the our audience, they understand exactly where we're coming from. And, you know, there's many things that people can misunderstand along the way from what you've mentioned, Sheikh. Yeah. But I think what you've mentioned is, is spot on, is, is 100%. Like, we have to, for the, for the bigger picture, especially an issue like this, um, we have to kind of put aside certain things, right? Um, whether it's differences or you know anything like for example some of the some of the names that we're seeing in in recent weeks you know you have Piers Morgan you have the show and yep. you have certain figures who've come out and maybe they've gone very popular because of the way they've approached yeah. the protest whether it's Bassam Yusuf yeah. or even Muhammad Hijab yeah um, Andrew Tate yeah Owen Jones whatever right yeah. these these guys now if you were to really kind of analyze each individual yeah okay some of them are Muslim that I've mentioned some of them aren't Muslim yeah you know if you were to really analyze, I, w- I would probably myself say, there's so many things that I would find bad about this person. Yeah. This, this, What's this per- his name? Cro- uh, Ritter. What's his name? Uh, uh, Cross Ritter. Okay. okay. He was an ex-Marine. Yeah. And the way he was speaking about, uh-huh. uh, about you yeah, know, yeah, about yeah. The, the, uh, the conflict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is even yeah. way beyond... Yeah. Uh, those, those Dr. Finkelstein and you know, uh, yeah. all of these. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so a lot of them, you know, some of them, like I said, aren't even Muslim. Yeah. Those those who are Muslim, you could say there's a lot of question marks about certain yeah. things, their lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I, I'm in agreement with that. But I think for, especially on this issue, you can't analyze those things right now. Now is not the time. Exactly. I think that's what we're trying to say. Yeah. And they have a voice, they have a following, they have resources, skills, whatever it might be that we need, whether yeah. they are Muslim or not Muslim, yeah. You know, but they are part of this cause, and that's exactly. what we need because it is a global conflict. Yes. Yeah. It is a global conflict. You know, as you said, actors, actresses, football uh, players, football yeah, yeah. players, everyone is participating in this. And then we say, no, 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 no. Okay, it's not a global. Okay, 
and we don't want the, 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 the globe to participate in this. We just uh, handed it or we uh, 2,000 of us or 10,000 of us, we will face the whole globe. And we will, uh, we will manage things. We will help the brothers and sisters in Palestine. We will defeat the occupation. We will free Palestine. We will defeat America. This is nonsense. This is nonsense. And on top of that, we will be able to build a civilization, a global divine civilization. No, this is madness. This is narrow thinking. And I really appeal to our brothers and sisters to move away from this narrow thinking because it is not helping us. Yeah, and coming back to what we were saying, like I've said this a few times now, when we say this time it feels different, perhaps this is one of the reasons where as in previous occasions, it was mainly Muslims, mainly yeah, Muslims. Yeah, exactly. And this time maybe it feels different because you have, you know, yes. you, not just Muslims, but many others, many others joining from, from across the world. Yes. Maybe that's why it feels different this time. Yes, definitely, definitely. And, and, and uh, see, our message as Muslims, is it a message for Arabs? Is it a message for Arabs? No. Is it a message for Asians? Our message is what? Yeah? Is a global message for the entire humanity. So we should be able to manage the entire humanity. And we cannot manage the entire humanity if we always zoom in to certain Islamic, you know, specifics. Okay? We need to zoom out to be able to handle these global uh, challenges. Some final points, Sheikh. Um, you know, we, 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 we touched on imams and du'at and, and, and scholars and so on. Um, and of course, you know, we've, we've already clarified that you know, everyone has a role to play. Of course, uh, undoubtedly, in the Muslim community, these are the ones who are looking up to. Um, and, you know, and I think, alhamdulillah, you know, this time round, whether it's khutbahs or events and, 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 and so on, you know, we, we, again, we're seeing a lot more activity this time round. But what is, what is your, if, if you were to have a message, for example, and one of the reasons why I mention this, because, you know, sometimes imams and so on, they're facing some pressure. Yeah. Um, like recently, there's been this kind of witch hunt, you could say. Yeah. Um, many imams that I know, yeah. some of my own personal khutbahs that I've given in different masjids, you know, the, 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 the Zionists and, you yeah. know, the... Uh, those on the other side that they're, they're taking clips and they're reporting it to yeah. the police. You know, one masjid that I've worked with, they, wallahi, what happened was uh, this account shared uh, a Habibi. clip. Habibi. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't find anything in the khutbah itself. Yeah. They they take the dua. Yeah, they, oh, yeah. you're asking for victory. Yeah. You're saying, Dammir yeah. a'daq, you know, yeah. so that means you must, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, um, and yeah. they, they shared it in the evening. The next morning, yeah. the police were in the masjid door. Is it? The next morning. Okay. Right? Saying, oh, we've received some complaints, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So yeah. now this may, for yeah. some, yeah. may feel like some kind of pressure. Yes. Oh, maybe I have to mellow yeah. down a yeah. little bit, et yeah. cetera. Yeah. Of course, we're saying, you know, you should be wise in the way you approach yeah. things. But what's your general message to... Yeah, this is, this is a good point. First of all, I have to say, mm. yeah, I have to say, Wallahi, I am really very proud of the British Muslim community. Seriously. I'm really proud of them, mashallah. They, and by the way, uh, I think the whole world is talking about us as the British Muslim community. Mm -hmm. And the key two countries, by the way, in this war, is the US and the UK. Yeah, of course. Yeah, mm. of course, the US is far bigger than the UK, mm. but UK has its own role. Yeah. And when, you know, when, the occupation, see that there is a million people and hundreds of thousands of people are keeping marching in London, mm -hmm. that will cause a pressure yeah. on the occupation and on America, mm -hmm. on the US. Imagine, I was telling the brothers that imagine the world is quiet. What will happen? Israel will continue yeah. massacring them. And the U.S., they will participate directly. Yeah. But when they felt that, oh, Muslims are feeling that this is a clash of civilization and this is anti-Islam now, mm. then they said, okay, we are supporting Israel by equipment, etc. But this is not a war against mm. Islam. Yeah, so 
they retreated a little bit. And now one of the key reasons why the occupation is thinking twice about the truth, about extending yeah, yeah. it, okay, is the, the, the global pressure, one, and second thing, is that they are unable to achieve any of their goals. Yeah. And subhanAllah, the Palestinians in Gaza, what motivates them and keeps them resisting is when they see that the whole world, you know, is supporting them. Yeah. The moral support, let us not, you know, de- de- neglect or belittle the moral support. Mm-hmm. Allah Jalla wa ala says to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, نون والقلم وما يسطرون ما أنت بنعمة ربك بمجنون وإن لك لا أجرا غير ممنون وإنك لا على خلق عظيم. Those words from Allah Jalla Ala is to console the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Yes or no? Yeah. What is this? Moral support. Mm. Imam Ahmed, when he was in prison, okay, his son he said, Oh father, I used to hear you a lot saying, Oh Allah, forgive Abu Haytham. Who is Abu Haytham? Who is Abu Haytham? He said, when I was in prison and they used to flog me, mm. wallah, if they were to flog an elephant, the elephant would have died. Mm. And sometimes I, uh, he's a human being. He feels the pain. Yeah. And he said, one time a person grabbed me from my clothes. And he said, Imam Ahmed. And he said, yeah, who are you? He said, Ana Abu Haytham. I am a burglar. And I was beaten more than you are beaten. Mm. And I was firm in doing the wrong things. Mm. You are doing the right thing. And you don't want to be firm. You don't want to continue. You don't want to show resilience. Imam Ahmed said what? Wallahi, that was a moral support that made me stronger. Mm. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that moral support Mm. is part of uh, or in is an essential part in any conflict. Mm. And the leaders, the imams, the imams, they should lead in this, in providing the moral support, let, al- mm. let alone other types of support, yeah. because they have a unique position. When you go to the khatib, when you go to the khutbah of Jum'ah, yeah, people are looking at you. And even, subhanAllah, look at this. People are sitting here and you are sitting above them. So there is a physical even meaning of mm. superiority. Mm. And people are commanded to listen to you. And then you are telling them nonsense? Mm. You will be questioned by Allah Jalla wa ala. وَإِذَا أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ لَتُبَيِّنَنَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ Allah took the covenant from the people who received the book that they have to clarify the book. And uh, Allah Jalla wa Ala said to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَاؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the, uh, the, uh, the khutbah of Wada' he was worried, Oh Allah, have I conveyed the message? Have I conveyed the message? Have I conveyed the message? And we are the followers, the imams, they are the inheritors of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so they have to make sure that they have what? Pass the message. Mm. And the message is relevant. If you see people don't pray, the message is to lead them to pray. If you see people oppressed, whoever sees a munkar, he should change it by his hand, if not, then by his uh, tongue. If he cannot, then by his heart. Yeah. So the imams, we are looking uh, up to our imams and we are expecting more and more from the imams. However, I would like also to say that the community has a role in what? In supporting the imams. Mm. So when I am in a khutbah and the imam is talking about nonsense, yeah, he is talking about love in Islam. Yeah? Or as, as one brother, he said, we went to a country and the people were be, were killing, uh, where uh, Muslims were killed. And the imam was speaking about what? Animals' rights. Because the government told them, speak about animals' rights. Mm. Don't you speak about, yeah? Mm. If the imam is doing that, he is sinful. Mm-hmm. Because he's not contributing in what? Amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar. 
So the congregations should go to him. Jazakallah khair. Yeah, but my dear Imam, we have these challenges. Mm. The khutbah should be there to educate us how to face the challenges, mm. to be relevant to our situation, not mm. to be away from our situation. Also, the Imams, you know, all of us have been attacked. You've been attacked. I've been attacked. Wallahi, it does, it makes a huge difference when just a person in the, when I'm traveling by public transportation, a person comes to me. Sheikh, don't worry. Wallahi, we are making dua for you. As w- what happened to Imam Ahmed, he said yeah. that person yeah. gave me moral support. This will give moral support to our Imam. So I advise the, 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 the masses to do this to our Imams, mm. to give them what? Moral support. Yeah. Even to give them financial support. There are so many rich people within our community. They should come. Sheikh Imam, don't worry. Even what? Even if you lose your job, okay, I can find you a job. Mm. Yeah? Don't worry. Your house, I can help you to fix your house, to build, okay, your house, etc. That is so important. We will work together. Mm. And wallahi, I'm proud of my Muslim community here in the UK. Yeah, they yeah. are doing really fantastic job. And we should, inshallah, they should keep doing uh, that more and more. And other communities, they are looking up to us. Mm-hmm. Other British communities, other, uh, sorry, other European communities, not only that, Arabs, you know, I don't want to mention certain countries, but some people are calling me from certain Arab countries. And they say, you know what? Wallahi, you are doing what we cannot do. You are saying what we cannot say. May Allah help you. We are really proud of you. Yeah? So, alhamdulillah, that is that is going on. We need. Mm. But let me just mention maybe uh, a few points before we... Yeah, before we close. Yeah, before we close. Let me just summarize... Uh, a road, okay, map for reform. Okay. A road map for reform. Okay. Four main steps. I'll make it simple, uh, digest, digestible by the average Muslim. Okay. It doesn't mean that it. Uh, I came. Uh, I came. Uh, we, uh, I came about. It uh, after uh, after uh, a short period of time. No, no, no. I came with it after long contemplation. Mm. And not only myself, we had a group of brothers like a think tank thinking about it for a long period of time. Okay. Okay? So we came out with this conclusion after uh, a long uh, contemplation, studies, etc., analysis. Okay, there are four main steps. Four main steps. The first step, we need the Muslim community to get closer to Allah. Why? Because victory comes from Allah. Help comes from Allah. Whoever have taqwa, Allah will find him an exit. Allah says, If you give victory to the deen of Allah by following the commandments of Allah Allah will give you what? Victory. Okay? And there are so many verses from Quran and Sunnah that confirm this reality. Number one. But the key thing about this is we want to go to Jannah. It's not because of victory in dunya. Mm. Because we want to go to Jannah. If we win everything in this dunya but we don't go to Jannah, then... It's a loss. Yeah. It's a loss. It's the actual loss. كل نفس ذائقة الموت وإنما توفون أجوركم يوم القيامة The one who is kept away from hellfire and admitted to Jannah فقد فاز. And we know the hadith of Sahih Muslim just because of time. We uh, can mention it later. So this is the first one. The second one, we need knowledge. Whether Islamic knowledge or general knowledge. Mm. Yeah? The ummah that is ignorant cannot be a leading ummah. Mm. The ignorant person cannot be a successful person. Yes or no? Yeah, correct. Okay, whether Islamic knowledge or we general knowledge. Mm. Number two. And of course, Allah Jalla wa Ala praised knowledge in general in Quran and in particular the Islamic knowledge. Yeah. Are they equal those who know and those who 
Do not know. Yeah. Number three, we need to be united. If we are disunited, we cannot be successful. Mm. Disunity means fail. Yeah. Failure. Okay? Allah Jalla Ala says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا Don't be disunited, otherwise you will fail. Simple. وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Again, there are numerous verses in the Quran and Sunnah that talk about what? Unity. Mm. Okay? Third, the fourth one, we need the entire ummah to be empowered. What do we mean by empowered? Effective and influential. Allah Jalla wa Ala called this Ummah as the best of nations. Why? Ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. Because of effectiveness and our influence. A Muslim means an activist. A Muslim cannot stand still. A Muslim cannot watch things going wrong around him and doesn't do anything. Man ra'a minkum munkaran. Whoever sees a munkar, he has to it change it. He has to do something. And there will be always mm. munkar and fasad and wrong things, evil things around us in the world. Yeah. So the whole ummah have to be what? Effective and influential. Mm. In particular, in the coming six or seven fields. Let us count them one by one quickly before we end. The first one is the political field. We need to be effective, influential in what? In the political field. Mm. Because politics is one of the tools of power, mm. the main tool of power. Yeah. And why Muslims are not involved in politics? Why they are not strong? In India, Muslims are 20 to 25% at least mm. of the population. In the parliament, they are less than 10%, and those 10%, they don't represent the 20 or 25% of Muslims. Mm. And that's why they are weak. Yeah. Why they are weak. We have some African countries, without mentioning the names, okay, the, uh, the, the Muslim population is 60% plus, but their representation in the parliament is what? 30%. This is political weakness, number one. Number two, we need to be strong in terms of media. And we have seen now that social media has what? Has shifted the narrative yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, towards us in our favor. Media, yeah. okay? So we need to be very strong, okay, in terms of media. Number three, we need to be strong in terms of legal framework and judiciary. Because if we, now there are, as we mentioned, there are so many uh, lawyers who are taking the occupation to, uh, to, to the, the courts, the international court, etc. And we as Muslims here, even in the UK on a, a smaller scale, if we don't know how to... Uh, use the system in our favor, we will fail. Yeah. So we need, okay, to understand the law to be strong legally, number three. Number four, economy. We need to be strong, influential, whether in the economy, uh, in, in, the, in, in, in finance, in terms of having economy yeah. and finance, or in terms of legislation. Financial legis legislations, number four. Number five, we need to be very effective and influential in any educational system because our children are receiving what? The education is through the educational system. If we don't have our narrative, they will be brainwashed. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay, so this is the, the fifth one. The sixth one, we need to be very effective and influential socially because people have problems. If we are not with them to solve their social problems, social problems, health problems, etc., we will not 
be part of them and they will see us as the external you know as the others okay let alone the amount of reward we will get okay when we help people so this is the sixth one the seventh one is da'wah and no need to talk about it because it is clear uh, that da'wah is our key element of existence as Muslims. So this is a summary of a road map to reform ourselves. And inshallah, slowly, slowly, I am very optimistic that one time, inshallah, we will get there. And we will see our um ummah being reformed and strong. Just finally, some people might ask about people in Palestine who are living in under occupation. In Palestine, in some other countries, in Kashmir, in some other countries who are living under occupation. Those who are living under occupation, they have to resist the occupation. That is another discussion. And resisting occupation, they, um, the international law, you know, recognizes that. Mm-hmm. And Allah Jalla Ala commanded us to do that in the Quran. Yeah. But apart from those who are under occupation, other people who are not under occupation, they have to focus on those things. Yeah. And of course, we said unity. So they have to help yeah. their brothers and sisters all over the world. And I think... Once we see the Ummah is reformed in England, in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, in Kashmir, in India, in Africa, in uh, Algeria, in Albania, every nation is rising up, rising up, slowly, slowly, the Ummah can be united and then we will see a Muslim superpower and that will be the start of the real reform, sorry, that will be the start, yeah, of seeing the ummah taking or building a divine civilization because the ummah has already started, yeah, and we should not, we should not project victory as reaching to the peak only. As far as you are climbing the mountain to reach to the peak, you are victorious. So our ummah now is victorious. But we need more victory. This is how I see it. So no one should ask, when is our ummah going to be victorious? We are already, what? Victorious. We have not reached to the peak yet, but we are moving towards that. If you are moving towards success, you are successful. If you are moving towards victory, you are victorious. So be proud, be optimistic, and keep it up. And inshallah, we will see more victory, not victory, more victory, inshallah, in the near future. Zakhna Khair, Sheikh Hitham, as one of our senior scholars, teachers, uh, it's been a, a pleasure to discuss with you. Um, for me, the, the discussion and the conversation was, alhamdulillah, it's, it's very insightful. And I hope for our viewers as well, inshallah, inshallah. it will be. Um, especially at the end, the practical tips and the roadmap that you shared with us. Uh, something I have a small request, Sheikh, and that is something we've never done on the podcast. We've, we've done, I think, almost 100 episodes now. Um, but I feel like, again, because there's so many viewers, so many amins we can get. Um, I feel like if we, if, if you don't mind ending with a, a very short dua, inshallah. Okay. La ilaha illallah wa ahlahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahumma ya hayu ya qayyum ya badi'a al-samawati wal-ard. اللهم إنا نستغفرك إنك كنت غفارا اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا كلها دقها وجلها ما علمنا منها وما لم نعلم لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم أنت ربنا لك الحمد ملء السماوات وملء الأرض وملء ما بينهما وملء ما شئت من شيء بعده لا إله إلا أنت لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم إنا نسألك بأسمائك الحسنى وصفاتك العلى اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك الصالحون ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذ منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعبادك الصالحون اللهم اللهم يا حي يا قيوم اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من 
من زوال نعمتك وتحول عافيتك وفجاءة نقمتك وجميع سخطك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم إنا نسألك أن تهيئ لهذه الأمة أمر الرشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويؤمر فيه بالمعروف وينهى فيه عن المنكر يا سميع الدعاء specific دعاء to our brothers and sisters Uh, in Palestine Allahumma mujri al-sahab Allahumma munzil al-kitab Allahumma munzil al-kitab wa mujri al-sahab wa hazim al-ahzab Allahumma mahzim a'da'a ikhwanina al-muslimina fi Gaza Allahumma mahzim a'da'ahum اللهم مهزم أعداءهم يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر إخواننا عليهم اللهم انصر إخواننا عليهم اللهم انصر إخواننا عليهم اللهم يا حي يا قيوم ارحم موت المسلمين في غزة تقبلهم كشهداء يا رب العالمين تقبلهم شهداء اللهم داوي جريحهم اللهم اكس عاريهم اللهم اللهم ارأف بهم يا رحيم يا رحمن يا رحيم رحمن اللهم كن لهم اللهم كن لهم اللهم نجل المستضعفين من المؤمنين في غزة اللهم نج المستضعفين من المؤمنين في غزة لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم إننا ظلمنا أنفسنا ظلما كثيرا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين